YCW stepping up and playing our part in making sure Wichita continues to be a progressive community that is able to attract and retain young talent. With the help of our committed community partners, we've retained Rebecca Ryan of Next Generation Consulting, and as of tonight, we're launching the Wichita Community Study. I have the honor and privilege of introducing Rebecca Ryan, the founder of Next Generation Consulting. They've studied the work and community preferences of young talent and have talked to more than 10,000 people over the last decade. Many of you may have heard her speak at chamber or YPW programs in the past, and we are excited that she could join us here tonight to tell you all about this project and what it really does mean to Wichita. Please help me in welcoming Rebecca Bryan. <laughs> Well, I was served by saying happy fourth birthday. So when I think of YPW and I think of where you started four years ago and where you are right now, you are the story of agility. You are the story of never getting too attached. And tonight we're launching a survey, um, part one of a multi-part uh, plan, a project for you guys to help you have an even bigger say in shaping Wichita's future. One of the reasons I am so stoked about this project here is because most communities don't ever give sort of the car keys to the next generation and say, drive it around for a little while, tell us what you think. You know, most communities, leadership really hangs on to power and that is such a problem. It's what caused the Irish potato famine, right? The Irish potato famine happened because Irish farmers were growing one kind of potato. So when the disease struck that one kind of potato, the whole crop was wiped out. And that's what sometimes happens in communities. I remember we did a survey for the Illinois Quad Cities, <coughs> and I remember one young professional wrote in their survey, who in this community has to die before I can get a seat at the big kid's table? <laughs> right? What a question. Who's got to die before like, I get to you know, sit at the big kid's table? And I thought, wow, that's a pretty compelling question. If that's on the minds of a 25-year-old, so that they feel that they're so locked out in that community. But communities like Wichita that are taking the time to ask, what do you most value? That are taking the time to say, if you can wave a magic wand, what one wish do you have for Wichita? Communities that are taking the time to let the next generation lead. These are the communities, again, whose best days are ahead of them. It all goes down to genetic diversity, right? The more diverse our thinking is in our communities, the more likely that our communities will succeed in the future. We are, we tonight, have this opportunity to really pull up our chair at the big kids' table, to tell our truth about what it's going to take for Wichita to be a community of the future, a destination, a magnet for young professionals like yourselves now and in the future. And I, I want to mention that one of the other questions that Dan asked yesterday was, well, aren't Midwesterners just too polite to tell the truth? And I said, not on an anonymous survey, they're not. Uh, they will let it all hang out. So we encourage you to take the survey tonight. There are two computers back there near the where the, we can catch wireless, near the windows, that you can tonight sit down and take the survey. Um, you'll have this, the link emailed to you. We want to encourage you to forward it to people, even the people who don't live here anymore. We want to know why they left, if they've ever thought about coming back. Um, but, you know, this notion of the big kids' table is you have to tell your truth. You can certainly tell it on the survey, and there are several other ways that you can be involved. At the end of the survey, we ask if you're interested in being interviewed and having an in-depth interview with um, a member of my staff where we call you on the telephone, and you can let it hang out even more. It's completely anonymous. Um, so if you're interested in being uh, having an in-depth interview, we encourage you to just uh, list your email address. Um, but we're really looking forward to not only hearing you through the survey, but also gathering some intelligence through these interviews and through focus groups. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I want to share a, an interesting experience I had a couple of, of years ago. A couple of years ago, I decided I was going to live for a while in Madison, Wisconsin, which is where I live now. And I thought, you know, it's close enough to my parents that I can see them, but far enough away that they don't come home <coughs> often. It's perfect, it's perfect distance. We finally found this architect. But he said, I won't build anything for you. I won't take any of your money until you fill out this questionnaire. And the last question, the one that it took me forever to fill out, was this question. He said, what do you want to be homesick for? What do you want to be homesick for? And when I finally filled it out, 
I wrote two words, my dogs. My dogs. I wanted to be homesick for my dogs. So when Chris built the home, he put in like 7-Eleven doors. You know, like those glass doors that are on quick trips or 7-Elevens or convenience stores so that my dogs could see me, right? So that, and that I could see them. Now, when you think about someone who is so interested in building something for you that you just can't imagine ever living anywhere else, you become homesick for it. It is that principle of intentional design. That the choices Chris made for our home, right? He made them very intentionally. But the choices we make today, the breadcrumb to what we're trying to do right now at this moment with this handprint study is, we have choices that we will make today that will determine whether our kids and grandkids choose to call Wichita home in their future. Can we create a city that people will be homesick for? I like to think that we can. Along this, these lines of creating some place that people want to be homesick for, um, one of the early brainstorms about what we should call this initiative was this one. Stay. You'll be back anyway. <laughs> it has been said, and it has been demonstrated, that in dire economic times, a new competitive order is established. You know, I mean, think about Lance Armstrong when he was winning his sixth, not his seventh, but his sixth, because that was the record. When he was winning his sixth, he went into the Alps. There were two days at high altitude of a lot of climbing, and there were three, two Germans and one Frenchman who could have beat him, who were giving him a run for his money. On day one, some of you will remember, he passed those Germans going uphill. On day two, the Frenchman was 100 yards ahead of him with 600 yards to go. It was impossible that he could have passed them, and he did. And no one recovered after that. Times are competitive right now, especially for Midwestern cities. But it is during these times that the new competitive order is established. So the choices we make today, the people we ask to be our leaders, those of us who step up and lead in new ways, these are the things that 20 years hence we will say, man, remember? Remember when we were at that fourth anniversary party? Do you remember when we did that handprint study? Do you remember how that drove decisions that our established emerging leaders made? Those are the opportunities we've got in front of us in the next in the next while. We want your voice. We want your voice. So two immediate actions. One is help us decide what this initiative is going to be called. And the second one is to please, please, please complete the survey. Uh, complete the survey that will allow you to help prioritize uh, where Wichita needs to, to be in, in a couple of years. I always say to YP groups, there are three things you need to do to really create the city that you want. One is to show up. You've done that tonight. The second is to reach out. Reach out especially to people um, who maybe aren't the usual suspects. Bring them in to the conversation. And the final one is to dig in and do some heavy lifting. There is nothing on television anyway, except on Thursday nights. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I want to thank you for showing up, reaching out, and digging in. Have a great night. Uh, please take a survey and text your uh, your book, your choice in here. Thank you very much. <laughs>